Traveling at about 17,000 miles per hour, 250 miles above the Earth, astronauts watch 16 sunrises and sunsets every day while floating around in a box with a handful of people they depend on for survival. Whether humans should set off to other worlds beyond Earth or not, one of the most compelling drawbacks is this. Our bodies don't like it. Few people know this better than the NASA astronaut who spent nearly a year on the International Space Station from 2015 to 2016, Scott Kelly. Like other astronauts, Mr. Kelly served as a test subject in the study of space travel's effects on the human body. Unlike other astronauts, Mr. Kelly has an identical twin, Mark, who is an astronaut himself. This gave researchers an uncommon opportunity to monitor the two brothers as they lived in two very different environments, one on Earth and the other 250 miles above it. When the astronaut went into space and his slightly older twin brother Mark stayed on Earth, the age gap between them increased thanks to his time in orbit. And it's all down to Einstein's theory of relativity. What it suggests is that time moves more slowly for objects in motion than it does for a stationary observer. It also moves more slowly the closer you are to a gravitational mass like Earth. In other words, we're not all experiencing time at the same rate. The faster you move and accelerate, the more time slows down. And because Mr. Kelly has been zooming up to and down from space and orbiting the planet at around 17,500 miles per hour, his brother Mark has lived through 0.005 extra seconds. The brothers were born six seconds apart back in 1964, and now that gap is 6.005 seconds. This warping of time is known as time dilation and the Kelly brothers qualify for both aspects of it. How fast they've been moving in relation to one another and how close they are to a big object, which is Earth. So, depending on our position and speed, time can appear to move faster or slower to us relative to others in a different part of space-time. And for astronauts on the International Space Station, that means they get to age just a tiny bit slower than people on Earth. That doesn't mean you could spend your life in a basement just to outlive the rest of us here on the surface. The effect isn't noticeable on such a small scale. If you became a basement hermit, then across your entire lifetime, you'd only age a fraction of a second slower than everyone else above ground. But your brain might freeze when you think about this. A watch strapped to your ankle will eventually fall behind one strapped to your wrist. Your head technically ages more quickly than your feet. Time passes faster for people living on a mountain than those living at sea level. The classic example for this is the twin scenario. One twin blasts off in a spaceship, traveling close to the speed of light, and the other stays behind on Earth. When the space-traveling twin returns to Earth, she's only aged a couple of years. But she's shocked to find that her Earth-bound sister has aged over a decade. Of course, no one has performed that experiment in real life, but there's evidence that it's real. When scientists launched an atomic clock into orbit and back, while keeping an identical clock here on Earth, it returned running ever so slightly behind the Earth-bound clock. Then time gets even more complicated, because time dilation can happen any time. A good way to think about it is to consider the astronauts living on the International Space Station. They're floating about 260 miles above, where Earth's gravitational pull is weaker than it is at the surface. That means time should speed up for them relative to the people on the ground. But the space station is also whizzing around Earth at about nearly 5 miles per second. That means time should also slow down for the astronauts relative to people on the surface. But the reality is that Mark, the brother who's aged a few milliseconds longer, could end up better off in the long run if Mr. Kelly's extended time in space causes his body to deteriorate faster. Ten science teams in NASA's twin study examined the brothers' astronauts before, during, and after the astronauts' 340 days in space. The teams studied each twin's bodily functions, they ran memory tests, and they examined the men's genes, looking what differences might be due to space travel. They confirmed that lengthy space travel stresses the human body in many ways. Space living can change genes and send the immune system into overdrive. It can dull mind and memory. Most changes that the astronaut experienced in space reversed once he returned to Earth, but not everything. The researchers tested him again after six months back on land. Roughly 91% of the genes that had changed activity in space were now back to normal. 
The rest stayed in space mode. His immune system, for instance, remained on high alert. DNA repair genes were still overly active, and some of his chromosomes were still topsy-turvy. What's more, the astronaut's mental abilities had declined from pre-flight levels. He was slower and less accurate on short-term memory and logic tests. It's unclear whether these results are definitely from spaceflight. That's partly because the observations are from only one person. But one thing is sure, time is relative. Think of it this way. If a clock is stationary and you are traveling at a very high speed, you happen to pass by this clock and have a glimpse at it, you'll see that it's running slowly, or maybe it's completely static. This is because the speed at which the mechanical functions of the clock are working slower than you. What you see is the time in the past, while you have already skipped that second and are in the future. During this experiment of high-speed traveling, you haven't aged at all, because all the processes in your body are working at the same speed as you. After a certain age, your body starts to deteriorate, which eventually leads to a state when it stops functioning. This aging phenomenon, especially in humans, is caused by a protein structure in the cells called telomeres. These structures protect our cells from deteriorating, but with each cell replication, these telomeres start to lose strength, which is called telomere length. If the telomere length shortens to a certain extent, the cell becomes vulnerable to diseases. We can say that telomeres are the natural countdown timers in our bodies, which determine when we will expire. The telomere length can be affected by external factors like stress, which accelerates our timer. The twin study experiment by NASA included documenting the changes in telomere length of both brothers. The telomere length of the space brother increased while he was aboard the International Space Station. Before the mission, both brothers had nearly the same telomere lengths. Meaning if we ignore issues like mental stress, both brothers should live roughly an equal age. But while the space brother was orbiting the Earth, he had almost 14.5% longer telomere length. The space brother was a few years younger than his ground brother biologically. Because the telomere length of the space brother resumed to normal when he came back to Earth, it took almost 190 days after return for the telomere length to restore to expected. The blood samples from the International Space Station were sent back to Earth for processing. This means the blood wasn't traveling at the speed of the ISS anymore. Also, the space-time paradox states that the space brother should be younger upon return. But the telomere length restored to its original state before the mission. The space brother was again the same age as his ground brother. A lack of gravity is the main cause for these intense changes in aging. Gravity plays an immense role in the majority of our bodily systems. Take the muscles for example. Older people's muscles tend to shrink and decline as they age and become less mobile. Astronauts' muscles react in a similar way because they are barely used. That's why astronauts staying in space for extended periods of time use special exercise machines to help reduce this effect. A similar process takes place in the bones. After a certain age, people on Earth start to lose mass in their bones, typically at a rate of about 1-2% to a year. But in space, those people lose bone mass at a greatly accelerated rate, as much as 1-2% to a month. Because the astronauts' bodies don't need to support their weight, the bones begin to decrease production of new bone material and increase the amount of old bone absorption. Luckily, their skeletal systems usually return to normal once they've spent some time back on our blue planet. If the space brother was shielded from all harms of space, like radiations, while orbiting the ISS, then he would have lived longer than his ground brother. Even though they're saving 0.005 seconds, astronauts still experience some of the symptoms of a drawn-out aging process. So the next time you find yourself wishing the weekend would last longer, stay low to the ground and move really fast. It won't feel like your weekend got any longer, but technically, you may gain a teeny tiny fraction of a second. You won't need to go to space for this little experiment. Now, did you know that there's an astronomical object in which space and time actually swap places? How does that work? And what exactly does swapping space and time mean? Well, let's figure it out. Imagine that you're on a spacecraft. The vehicle can only move straight. Your path leads to some inevitable point, and you have no idea what lies ahead. You can only hope that it won't be too bad. Meanwhile, everything around you is complete madness. 
A chaotic collage of many historical events. What do you see? Ancient humans and dinosaurs? The birth of the universe? A future? Who knows? That's what the universe would look like if we swapped time and space. And theoretically, this is what you would see if you fell into a black hole and somehow were able to survive. But how is something like this even possible? First of all, let's discuss time and space. Imagine drawing a light bulb on a sheet of paper. Then grab one more sheet and draw how it lit up. Right now, it's just a small circle of light. Another sheet? The circle of light is growing. It gets bigger and bigger in size, until finally, it turns into a giant circle. In real life, the bulb lights up in the blink of an eye. That's because the speed of light is the fastest in the universe. But here, on our drawings, we capture the propagation of light frame by frame. We see how, over time, the light has grown from a small dot to a large circle. But if you connect these circles, doesn't it remind you of some shape? For example, a cone? Yes, exactly! This is called a light cone, and time is the central axis of this cone. Why? Because light turns from a small dot into a large circle over time. To remember it, let's draw a time vector, an arrow inside the cone. It goes from the past to the future. Meanwhile, the circles are space. In space, we can move however we want, in any direction. We can move up or down, in zigzags, and so on. But no matter what zigzags we draw, along the timeline, we're always moving forward. We can't turn back in time, and we can't stop it. This helps us define time and space. Time is the direction in which the light cone is oriented. This is the direction where all our paths lead, and where our future inevitably lies. And space is the whole variety of directions perpendicular to the timeline. This is a straightforward graph. If it could be applied to the entire universe, then time would flow the same everywhere. However, if you've watched at least some popular sci-fi movies, you know that this isn't the case. In reality, time can be crazy. For example, if you're chilling near a black hole, what will be two hours for you may turn out to be 20 years for your friend on Earth. But why? Well, take a deep breath. Now gravity comes into play. Oh, I know about gravity. It's that thing that helps me to stand on the ground, you may think. But it's much, much more complicated than that. Gravity is one of the basic physical forces in our world, and it's incredibly powerful. In fact, she's such a girl boss that she can distort space and time. She can literally influence the speed of time like an almighty wizard. How? Well, let's take something slightly bigger than a light bulb. For example, a supernova. Somewhere in the universe, a star has just made a boom. How do we know about it? Well, nothing in the universe, no sound, no radio waves, nothing, travels faster than light. So we'll know about the birth of a supernova only when we see it. And this will happen only when its light cone grows enough and reaches our planet. So the light cone grows and grows. So far, everything is fine. And finally, it reaches our planet. But there's a catch. You see, our planet is very massive, very massive, and it has pretty strong gravity. What happens then? Gravity changes the direction of the light cone. It begins to attract the cone to the center of our planet. And with it, it also attracts our arrow of time. That means it slows the time down. And the closer the light cone is to us, the more the arrow bends and the slower time goes. What does it mean? Well, for example, The fact that the watch on your ankle will lag behind the watch on your wrist. That your head is aging faster than your legs. And that astronauts in Earth's orbit age a little slower than people on Earth. This is what scientists call general relativity. Right. But how does this relate to our topic? How can we understand what will happen if we swap space and time? Nah, don't worry. We're almost there. Now, imagine a cosmic body with incredibly strong gravity. It bends time and space so much that it feels like they swap. This is a black hole. A black hole attracts absolutely everything to its center. No stars, planets, no light can escape from there. Let's say our light cone is approaching it. First, as usual, time begins to bend toward the center of the black hole, attracted by its gravity. But the gravity is very strong. So it bends more and more, 
and time goes slower and slower the closer you're to the center. In the end, the light cone crosses the boundary of the black hole, the so-called event horizon. At this point, it gets so distorted that now it's literally pointing downwards. We can say that time has changed its direction. Time is pointing downwards. What kind of nonsense is that, you may ask? It'll be easier to explain in a real example. Imagine you're a crazy astronaut who decided to jump into a black hole. And there's an observer in the spaceship who watches you doing this for some reason. At first, for you, nothing changes. You look at your watch, you see that 5 minutes have passed, and everything's okay. But for the observer, first of all, you'll fall for a very long time. The observer has been sitting there for 50 years, and you're still falling. All because your time has slowed down. Secondly, since space is also distorted near the black hole, the observer will see how you'll begin to stretch like spaghetti. This is a scientific term, by the way. It's called spaghettification. And then you finally cross the event horizon. The observer doesn't see you anymore. Light cannot escape from a black hole, so your image won't reach the observer even if you're still inside. And what about you? What if you somehow survived? Remember, the time arrow is pointing to the center of the black hole. What does it mean? It means that now, the center of the black hole is your future. It isn't a place, it's a fate that you can't change. And wherever you came from, as well as the rest of the universe, no longer exists for you. Because now, it's not a place, but an event from the past. And since you can't turn back time, you'll never be able to come back. But what is around you? complete chaos. The rays of light now move in all directions, forward, backward, and so on. The rays depicting the events of the past, the future, the present, all this is moving around you. In reality, space and time didn't swap places, but it feels like they did. Because in space, you can now only move forward, as if along a straight line. And time, reflected in the light rays, surrounds you everywhere and moves in all possible directions. And here we go back to the beginning. This horrifying example helps us imagine what it would feel like if time and space got reversed. Of course, all this is just theories and guesses. The very idea that we're moving in some one direction, the one we haven't chosen, and there's complete time chaos around, sounds quite frightening. And yet, it would be a very interesting experience. Sounds dangerous. Mm, Why don't you go first? That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.